This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is for the course ME273 Statics, and we use the book Statics by R.C. Hibbler. Today I'm going to be talking about Chapter 7.2, Shear and Moment Equations and Diagrams. After today, you will be able to draw shear and moment diagrams for 2D load cases. First, I'll go over some applications and I'll show you how to draw the shear and moment diagrams and then we'll do some problem solving. Here's an application. Beams are structural members designed to support loads applied perpendicular to their axes. And beams can be used to support spans of bridges as you see here. They are often thicker at the supports as you can see here and they taper to be smaller at the center of the span. Why are they tapered? Well, internal forces are important in making such a design decision. In this lesson, you will learn all about these forces and how to determine them. Beams are structural members designed to support loading supplied perpendicular to their axes. In general, they are long and straight and have a consistent cross-sectional area. They are often classified as to how they are supported. For example, a simply supported beam is pinned at one end and has a roller support at the other, whereas a cantilever beam is fixed at one end and free at the other. The actual design of a beam requires a detailed knowledge of the variation of the internal forces, the shear and the bending moments. The actual design of a beam requires a detailed knowledge of the variation of the internal shear force V and the bending moment M acting at each point along the axis of the beam. Now these variations of the shear force and the bending moment along the beam's axis can be obtained by using the method of sections that we went over in chapter 7.1. In this case, however, it's necessary to section the beam at an arbitrary distance x from one end, as you can see here and then apply the equations of equilibrium to the segment having the length x. Doing this, we can then obtain the shear force and the bending moment as functions of x. In general, the internal shear and bending moment functions will be discontinuous, or that means their slopes will be discontinuous at points where distributed load changes, or where there is a concentrated force or a couple moment is applied. Because of this, these functions must be determined for each segment of the beam located between any two discontinuities of the loading. For example, as you see here, we have a distributed loading uh, here, and so we're going to have x1 inside of that distributed loading. x2 occurs at a point that is uh, after distributed loading ends, but before the applied force P is applied. And the third situation is after the applied force P is applied, then we have X3. Now some steps for drawing shear and moment diagrams. Uh, first, determine support reactions. Then you specify a separate coordinate X having an origin at the left side of the beam and extending to regions between concentrated forces and our couple moments or where the distributed loading is contiguous. Section the beam at each of those distances x, draw the free body diagram, and then use the equations of equilibrium to solve for the shear and the moment at that particular cut. And then once you make all the cuts in the beam and solve all the equations of equilibrium, we can draw the shear and moment diagram. The best way to show you how to do this is just to do some examples. So here we have a beam. Uh, the support at A is a thrust bearing, the support at C is a journal bearing, and we have a 5 kilonewton load applied at point B. Find the shear and moment diagrams of the beam. But first we're going to need to solve for the uh, reactions at A and B. So let's draw a free body diagram of the entire beam. So we have uh, C sub Y C sub x, A sub x, and A sub y. And we have the 5 kilonewton load here. And since it's operating in the center of the beam, uh, these two values are going to be equal. And so therefore, A sub y is 
equal to c sub y, which is two and a half kilonewtons. And I got that by summing forces in the y direction. I'm not going to worry about c sub x and a sub x. It's pretty obvious that they're uh, equal to each other but opposite in direction. So here is a free body diagram of the beam. Uh, when I've sectioned it before the concentrated load, we have the two and a half kilonewton pin reaction at A, and this is for zero is it less than or equal to uh, greater than zero or less than two. So first, let's sum forces in the y direction, and we get 2.5 minus V sub C is equal to zero, so V sub C is 2.5 uh, kilonewton. And we want to sum moments about A. So we have the shear force, and it's operating a distance x away from A. And we just solve for the shear force is 2.5. It wants to rotate clockwise around A, so it's negative. So this would be minus 2.5 times x uh, plus the bending moment m. So that means the bending moment is 2.5x. So it's a function of x. At x equals 0, the bending moment is 0, and at x is equal to 2, the bending moment is 5. So here's a free body diagram after the concentrated load of 5 new kilonewtons. And again, we have this variable x, but this time x is greater than 2 meters or less than or equal to 4 meters. So let's sum forces in the y direction. So we have the 2.5 kilonewton load at A, our pin reaction rather. We have minus 5 kilonewtons applied load, and we have minus the shear force, and that equals 0. So from this, we get uh, V is equal to minus 2.5 kilonewtons. So next, I'm going to sum moments about the right end of the beam. So the summation of moments is equal to 0. Uh, the bending moment is drawn positive, so it's positive. Uh, we have the 5 kilonewton load, and it's x minus 2 meters away. And you need to convince yourself that that indeed is true. Um, it, the 2 comes from that there, so x minus 2 is equal to that distance. So it's 5 kilonewtons, and wants to rotate clockwise. It's positive, so it's plus 5 times x minus 2. And lastly, we have the pin reaction at A. It wants to rotate clockwise, so it's negative, and it's x distance away from the end of the beam. So this would be minus uh, 2.5x. And you solve that, you get that m is equal to uh, 10 minus 2.5x kilonewton meters. So now it's time to draw the shear and bending moment diagram. Um, if you remember on this side of the beam, we got that the shear force was a positive 2.5 uh, kilonewtons. And we got the bending moment was 2.5 times x. And on this side of the beam, the shear force was negative. 2.5 kilonewtons. And we got the bending moment was uh, 10 minus 2.5 times x. So let's draw the shear diagram first, and that means we're going to draw the shear on the y axis and the dimension x on the x axis. So between A and B, the shear is positive 2.5. Between B and C, the shear is minus 2.5. There's a discontinuity there, and it goes down like that. So this is 2.5 uh, kilonewtons, and this is 2.5 kilonewtons. So that's the shear diagram. Now the moment diagram, now this is a function of x. So um, on this section of the beam is 2.5 times x. When x is 0, the bending moment is 0. When x is 2, the bending moment is 2 times 2 and a half, or 5. So that's 5 kilonewton meters. 
And in between that, you know it's a linear function, so you can just draw a straight line between the two. So this is five uh, kilonewton meters. And uh, on this side of the beam, it is 10 minus 2.5x. So when x is four, remember that each side of this is two meters. So when x is four, the moment is zero. So at this point, the moment is zero. And it's a, it's a linear function, so again, you can just draw a straight line between those two points. So that's your answer. This is the shear diagram, and this is the moment diagram. Now let's do one with a distributed load. Uh, we want to find the shear and moment diagrams of this beam. It's pinned at this point, has a roller at this point, and we have a triangular-shaped uh, distributed load. So we're going to need the uh, pin reaction. So let's draw a free body diagram of the entire beam. So we have a sub y, a sub x. We have uh, at this point, I'll just call that b sub y, just b, it's a roller, it just has a normal force. And the resultant of the distributed load would be one half the base times the height. So one half of nine times six or uh, 27. And that is operating one-third the distance away from this end. So this is 3 meters, and this is 6 meters, and this is 27 kilonewtons. So first, let's sum moments about A. Set that equal to zero. So we have the 27 kilonewton resultant force wants to rotate clockwise, so it's negative uh, 6 times 27. And then we have the reaction force at B, it's 9 meters away, it wants to rotate counterclockwise, so it's positive, so plus 9 times B. So in this case, we get B is equal to 18 kilonewtons. And if we sum forces in the Y, set that equal to 0, we have A sub Y minus 27 plus 18. So a sub y comes out to be 9 kilonewtons. So it's pointing up. B is pointing up. Okay. So now it's time to section the beam. Here I have the 9 kilonewton load that we just, uh, pin reaction rather, that we just solved for at A. Uh, we have some resultant force here. Um, we have this distance x, and the resultant force is located at a distance x minus 3 away from wherever we section the beam. So first we'll sum forces in the y direction, is equal to 0. So this means that um, we have positive 9 minus v. Now we need to figure out what the resultant load is as a function of x. So the resultant force is equal to one half the base, which is x, times the height at that section. If we go back here, uh, we want to solve the equation for this distributed load. So I know at 9 meters it's 6 kilonewtons per meter, and at 0 meters it's 0. So you can use those two points to define a um, a weighting function. The weight as a function of x is uh, two-thirds times x. Because at nine meters, two-thirds of that is six, and that's at six kilonewtons there. When x is zero, we get zero. So that is the equation for that line right there. And that'll give us the height as a function of x, and that's what we wanted. So that height right there is uh, two-thirds times x. So the resultant force then is one-half the base x times the height which is two-thirds of x. So this comes out to be one-third x squared. So that's the resultant force as a function of x. We were summing forces in the y. We got the nine kilonewton, we got the shear, and now we need the resultant force, and it's pointing down, so it's minus one-third x squared. So that means that v is equal to nine minus x squared over three. Kilonewtons. Now I'm going to sum moments about the end of the beam there. 
So we have the bending moment, it's drawn positive, so M. We have the 9 kilonewton load, it's X away from the end of the beam. It wants to rotate clockwise, so it's negative, so it's minus 9 times X. And finally, we have the resultant load uh, times its distance away from the end, which is X over 3. It wants to rotate clockwise, so it's positive, so resultant load is 1 third X squared times uh, X over 3. So the bending moment as a function of x comes out to be uh, 9 times x minus x cubed over 9. And that would be kilonewton meters. So now it's time to draw the shear diagram. And if you remember, the equation for the shear was uh, 9 minus x squared over 3. So we want to plot V versus X. So when X is equal to zero, the shear force is nine, right? So that's here, nine. And at the end of the beam, the shear force is uh, nine minus four squared over three. And that's minus 18. So know the shear force at the end is minus 18. The question is, what happens in between? Well, the shear force is 9 minus x squared over 3. We know these two points here. That's a um, second order equation, so it's going to be in this shape like, like this. Now, we need to know where does it cross the x-axis here. So it, the shear is equal to zero at that point, right? So we can set this equation equal to zero and find that distance x. So nine minus x squared over three is equal to zero. So x comes out to be 5.2. So this is 5.2 meters to the point where it crosses the um, x-axis. This is shear. Now let's draw the bending moment diagram. And its equation was uh, 9 times x minus x cubed over 9. So when x is equal to 0, the bending moment is equal to 0. Uh, when x is equal to 5.2, plug that into here, and we get the moment at 5.2, and that's equal to 31.2. Now it turns out, this is a good thing to know, is that the maximum bending moment occurs when the shear is zero. So we know that's going to be the maximum. So that's uh, 31.2. In between these two points, it's this equation. It's a cubic. So it's going to have some sort of shape like this. And on the other side, it's similar, except uh, at 9, the bending moment goes to zero. If you plug 9 into this equation, you get zero. So it looks like and the equation of that um, cubic is uh, 9x minus x cubed over 9. This concludes chapter 7.2, Shear and Moment Equations and Diagrams. We're going to skip 7.3, Relations Between Distributed Load, Shear, and Moment, and Section 7.4, Cables. So the next video is going to be on 8.1, Characteristics of Dry Friction, and 8.2 problems involving dry friction. See you in cyberspace.